time for overtime. Stop what you're doing and listen. In the world of sports, it's all about the playmakers in today's headlines. From locals to the pros. With interviews from local standouts and sports all-stars across the country that will have you talking. 3-2 pitch. Basketball belted deep right. Long gone. Hear from coaches to players, sports analysts, and broadcasters who are a part of the action every day. Overtime. Now with Burt Ramin on ESPN 102.3 AM 1000 KSOO. Sioux Falls Sports Leader. Up to bat and leading off hour number two here on a Tuesday. Congratulations to Paul, Cody, and Jeremy on their way to LFA MMA 182 here in Sioux Falls. Sanford Pentagon on Friday night. Tickets still available there, but those three individuals... Hooked up with the goods via overtime at ESPN Sioux Falls. Congratulations once again to Paul, Cody, and Jeremy nabbing the last eight tickets right here for our ticket giveaway on a Tuesday. Still to come, headlines and highlights, NFL latest draft previews for the Giants and the Chargers, pick six and pick five, respectively, in the NFL draft running Thursday through Saturday, Thursday and Friday. You can listen to the NFL draft right here on ESPN 102.3 AM 1000 KSOO. Coverage on Thursday night begins at 6 o'clock, Friday night 5 o'clock, and as always, we're your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. They return today, 6 o'clock pregame coverage ahead of a 6.40 start time at home against the Chicago White Sox. Joe DeLeon, college football NFL draft analyst with the Believe Network, joins us around 12.30. And we finish up today's show with the latest edition of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. A lot to like and a lot to dislike regarding, uh, depending upon your perspective, last night in the NHL postseason, if you're a Boston Bruins fan... Tough loss last night to Toronto. A long lead pass for Matthews. Matthews is in alone. Scores! Holy Macada! Big Pappy has given the Leafs the lead. Other game, that one wrapped up Toronto 3, Boston 2. Series tied one game apiece. How about the Hurricanes? They notch another win. They lead the Islanders early in that series. Two games to none. And there's still time left here. As Martin backs it in. the win for the Canes in Raleigh. They lead that series 2-0. Pair of game ones last night. Early good start for the Golden Knights. Road win over Dallas 4-3. And Edmonton can score with the best of them. They hang seven on the Kings at home for a big win for the Oilers. Lead that series 1-0. Zach Hyman with a hat trick. Hyman reversing the dry saddle. Guides it to Bouchard. McDavid right face off top. Tip tone. 6-2. Hyman's got a hat trick. 7-4 the final last night. Edmonton takes the lead 1-0 in that series against the LA Kings. Sets us up for tonight. We have four game twos on the way, beginning with the Capitals at Rangers. 6 o'clock on ESPN. Rangers up 1-0 there. Lightning at Panthers. 6-30 ESPN 2. Panthers lead 1-0. Avalanche at Jets. 8-30 on ESPN. Winnipeg with an early edge in that series and Predators visit the Canucks Nashville up against it down one game to nothing on the road for game two nine o'clock on ESPN two the NBA sizzled and popped last night all sorts of great in uh, great great action across the board it started with Orlando and Cleveland from Cleveland where the Cavs had the last word Donovan Mitchell a big reason why they're up two nothing in the series here's Mitchell into the paint Mitchell how with two hands Donovan Mitchell has a 14-point first quarter, and the Cavs are up by seven. Big start for Mitchell, big win for the Cavs, 96-86. to Jarrett Allen, one of the leaders last night for Cleveland, 16 points and 20 rebounds in a dominant performance for Cleveland at home. Elsewhere, Philly looked pretty good for moments. The Knicks looked better late as they finished the job and win their second straight game at home to lead off the series. Here's Maxi into the front court with two. Maxi got a shoot. It gives it to MB. Three pointer at the horn. No good. The Knicks win to go up two games to none against the Philadelphia 76ers. NBA postseason so darn good. Joel Embiid and his team might be down two games to none, but the star of the Sixers still confident in this team's chances. We're good. We're going to win this series. Um, you know, we, we're going to win this. We know what we got to fix. We did a better job today, so we're going to fix it. 
uh, but we're the better team, and we're going to keep fighting. We'll wait and see who's the better team when it's all said and done as that series shifts to Philly for Game 3. The Knicks have a 2 nothing series lead there. Josh Hart, the leader last night for New York, 21 points, 15 rebounds in the win. Last night, though, we had a great one, 200 total points, nice and even number, 101-99. to Denver wins over the Lakers. If you didn't watch the game, you have to dive into the details and watch the story and look at it because Denver was down big at the end of the first. They were down big. At halftime, down big entering the third, but Denver kept on coming, kept on punching, and they find a way to win, and it came down to the final seconds. He's at the midcourt circle, four seconds, three seconds left, why are they not fouling? Jumper Murray, got it to hard! Denver bounced the comeback, they come back from 20 points down, they win game number two! Ball Arena coming absolutely unglued on that final step step back bucket for Jamal Murray. And again, Murray with the game winner. Jokic, though, very casual. 27 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 assists. Darvin Ham, head coach of the Lakers, says that's a really good team. You know, it's just that's a tough team. Like you you gotta you gotta come with it. You can't take any possession off. You know, ball gets knocked around, come falls into Michael Porter Jr.'s hands, he hits a big three for them. So we gotta be on deck at all times versus this ball club. We've now witnessed the best of the Lakers that we've seen so far in the postseason. Can they play better? I'm sure they could. Will they? I'm not so sure. And in fact, Chris Canty isn't so sure either. He thinks the Lakers are absolutely done following last night's uh, squandering of a 20-point advantage. The Lakers are not winning four of the next five games. It's over. It's over. Like, it's over. That was their last stand. That was the last gas. It is over. Like, there's a reason why it's starting to hear grumblings about how the organization is going to bring Darvin Ham back no matter what happens in this series. You know why they're saying that stuff? Why? Publicly? Because privately they're having a conversation on whether or not we got the right damn head coach. <laughs> 101-99 the final. Denver leads it two games to none. The Lakers actually a small favorite right now according to DraftKings at home for game number three. Tonight in the NBA, Timberwolves fans get your ears perked up. 6.30 on TNT playing host to the Suns in game two of that series. Game two, Pacers at Bucks, 7.30 on NBA TV. And game two for the Clippers home to the Mavericks, 9 o'clock start time on TNT. Major League Baseball finals from yesterday. Milwaukee lost in Pittsburgh 4-2. Detroit win at 1 in Tampa 7-1. to And the Minnesota Twins notch one of their more dominant wins of the young season. Chris Paddock earns the win, his first of the year. And Eddie Julian puts the icing on the cake late with this homer. Swung on, hit high in the air to right field for Julian. It's a towering, towering drive to right, and it's on to the plaza for a home run. Minnesota Twins Radio Network there. Final score, 7-0 Minnesota. Feels good to get a win like that for Twins country. 8-13, and the new record there. Other finals, Toronto over Kansas City, 5-3 from KC. Arizona lost to St. Louis, 5-3 at Bush Stadium. And elsewhere, Colorado lost at home in Denver to visiting San Diego. That final, 3-1. to Today in Tonight in Major League Baseball, Red Sox at Guardians at 5:10, Brewers at Pirates, Tigers at Rays, also on the early afternoon docket. White Sox at Twins, six o'clock pregame, 6:40 the first pitch time, right here on the Twins Radio Network. Other games tonight: Blue Jays at Royals, Astros at Cubs, Diamondbacks at Cardinals, to name just a few. NFL Draft Week is officially upon us. We're two days away from the Thursday night opener from Detroit. Reese Davis, college football analyst for ESPN had this to say about one of his favorite quarterbacks in this year's draft. I have, for a couple of years, been on the Drake May bandwagon. I would consider taking Drake May one. I know they're not going to. And I think a lot of this, uh, I've jokingly said to my buddy Pete Thamel that I have tired of the Drake May blasphemy over the, you know, over the last uh, several weeks. I think people are going to go wherever he winds up, most likely three, I think. But wherever he goes, people are going to say, oh, wow, I guess he is good. You know, I I think he's going to be a sensational pro. There's all sorts of debate out there among Minnesota Vikings fans on if they get up to number three or if they get up to number two or number four or number five, wherever they get to, what quarterback should they take if they're all available and they all being Jaden Daniels, Drake May, or 
J.J. McCarthy, or maybe out there there's a Vikings fan that loves Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix, or maybe you want to wait till 11 and not give up any more draft capital and just take whoever falls there. I would love to hear from Vikings fans at any time here on the show as to your opinion, or maybe you're one of those weirdos, 40% of you, by the way, that responded to a recent poll and said, Give me Sam Darnold for a year and let's put the first two first round picks to work on other needs on the roster. I want to hear from people like that. 605-362-3776 is always the number to dial. Thor Nystrom, who was on the show yesterday, very much on the J.J. McCarthy hype train. Dustin Baker joins us every week on Thursdays. He'll be here this week, Thursday and Friday, for a preview and a wrap-up of round number one of the NFL Draft. If Dustin had his pick, he'll tell you this week again, it's Drake May at pick number three. If they trade up there, if Drake May is available at pick four, and that's the pick that they end up trading for, take Drake May as well. He's on the Drake May bandwagon, but he would be perfectly fine if it's J.J. McCarthy. The nightmare scenario, if you will, no disrespect intended, but for both of those individuals, from what I've been able to coerce out of them, is Bo Nix probably not the fit for the Minnesota Vikings that many people think that he could be in other places. Bo Nix has a lot of intangibles, really great player, but Minnesota Vikings, the analysts that we have had on, not super big fans of Bo Nix's tape and his pedigree as he prepares to make the jump in the NFL draft. Lastly, here tomorrow on the show we will talk with Darren Wolfson another guy very much entrenched in the Minnesota pro sports scene we'll be talking Timberwolves we'll be talking twins and of course Minnesota Vikings I will try to get a prediction and a preference out of Darren tomorrow on the Wednesday edition of the show now on to your Reliant Bank headlines of the day big news in the college basketball scene in particular Women's basketball. The Augustana women's basketball team has their new head coach, Augie Vice President for Athletics, Josh Morton, announced on Tuesday, that's this morning, that Sioux Falls native Nate Vogel will be the next head coach of the Viking women's basketball program. Celebration formal intro of Vogel as the next head coach of Augie women's basketball will take place on Thursday at 11.30 a.m. That's going to be inside the University Welcome Center on the campus of Augustana. Gathering is open to the public one more time Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Vogel comes to Augie after collecting a program best 25 and 7 record at Texas A&M International. Also helped them reach their first ever national ranking this last year, reaching number 17 in the country. And here's a quote from Vogel on the opportunity to be the next head coach of Augie women's basketball. I'm so excited to come home and lead the team. I grew up cheering for as a little kid to be able to bring my family back to Sioux Falls where my parents and most of my extended family still live is a dream come true. I know how fortunate I am to have this job and I'm so excited to be the next head coach at this great institution. Let's get to work. Obviously, big time news there. Nate Vogel, the new Augustana women's basketball coach. We will be trying to talk to coach uh, Vogel as soon as possible. Hopefully next week on Overtime right here on your airwaves. Now, South Dakota women's basketball, other side of the coin. They're losing their coach as of last night. Coach Kayla Karius announced on Tuesday that she's accepted the head coaching position at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. Karius compiled a 37-29 and record in two seasons with the Yotes, and South Dakota reached the WNIT's round of 16 this past season in her second year at the helm. Karius is a Sheboygan, Wisconsin native, starred at Green Bay in college. This makes all sorts of sense for her and her family. Tough to see her go. Class act, ton of fun, great personality, and a great guest on the show as well. Great basketball coach, 37-29, and the overall record. But USD Coyote women's basketball, once again, looking for another head coach this offseason. Not late stage, still middle of the offseason right now. Tough news, though. Kayla Karius on to UW-Green Bay. Best of luck in the future to Coach Kayla Karius and her family and Phoenix basketball. South Dakota State's baseball game slated for tomorrow afternoon against Dakota Wesley and has been canceled to allow the Tigers to play makeup games within their conference schedule. Also a cancellation for Jackrabbit softball. Their upcoming three-game non-conference road trip has been cut down to just one. Jackrabbits were scheduled to begin the road swing with a doubleheader at Wisconsin this afternoon. Those games have been canceled. Two games set has been canceled due to weather in the area. South Dakota State, though, is still slated to play a single game on Wednesday stay at Minnesota. Jackrabbits and Gophers are expected to square off at Minnesota's Jane Sage Cowles Stadium with first pitch at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Jackrabbits will follow that
that up by returning home for their final regular season home series. SDSU softball plays host to St. Thomas at Jackrabbit Softball Stadium on April 27th and the 28th. Augustana football has their new five captains for the season. Couple returning captains from last year. Peyton Buckley and Hayden Wallace are now uh, two-time captains. Three newcomers Matt Francis, Kyle Graham, and C.J. James. Those were announced as part of the Augustana spring game on Saturday. More on the, uh, the captains and a little bit more on their history as well. GoAuggie.com, the place to go for that news. Also at GoAuggie.com, Andrea Kane of Viking softball was named the Northern Sun Conference Player of the Week after recording five home runs over 22 at-bats with 13 RBI. Kane's powerful week at the plate helped Augie clinch its fourth straight NSIC regular season championship. The Brandon Valley High School grad, Sioux Falls native and the sophomore slashed 500, 560, and 1182 as Augustana clinched its fourth straight NSIC regular season title. She had five home runs and just 22 at-bats and also knocked in 13 runs over the last week. Andrea Kane, your NSIC Player of the Week. Lastly, here as we say so long to your Alia Bank headlines of the day. This was the candidate for the good and the good, the bad, the ugly, but I felt it was local enough and prudent enough. We needed to put it in your headlines instead. The Minnesota Timberwolves ownership dispute between majority owner Glenn Taylor and the Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez group will advance to a mediation session on the 1st of May in Minneapolis, according to ESPN on Monday. Taylor ended what had been a three-year ownership succession plan in late March when he announced that Lori and Rodriguez had failed to meet deadlines on the sales conditions to assume majority ownership coming up in the spring. Lori and Rodriguez aggressively disputed Taylor's assertions and are pushing to restore the original agreement, which called for an automatic 90-day extension to obtain MBA approval and majority ownership as part of the original contract. Mediation is the first step in the process of finding a resolution to the ongoing conflict despite the ownership unrest Timberwolves playing the best they ever really have in the postseason right now especially in recent memory they took a one nothing lead in Phoenix on Saturday looking to take a 2 nothing lead over Phoenix at home tonight as well a lot to look forward to there but Wolves ownership set for mediation to begin the month of May Minnesota Timberwolves 6.30 tip off tonight at home against the Suns watch that game on TNT. Those are your live ink headlines of the day for hour number two. When we come back, let's nosedive into the National Football League. Always love talking NFL draft with you. We had a marquee quarterback announce a retirement yesterday. Didn't play last year, but ultimately hung up the cleats now. As of yesterday, we'll tell you who that is. Some other news from the NFL, including the Denver Broncos. Not only did they unveil their uniforms to mixed reaction yesterday, they also acquired a new quarterback that we want to talk to you about and get your opinions on. If Dano's out there listening, I gotta hear from Dano if he's out there listening today on the quarterback that rumbles and bumbles his way into the Mile High City. Giants and Chargers up next for our draft previews as well. It's all ahead on this Tuesday edition of Overtime. Get ESPN with the free app and online. Grab your phone or call us up on your smart device. Now let's get you back to Overtime with Burt Ramin on ESPN 102.3 and AM 1000 KSOO. Right back with you. It is the Tuesday edition of Overtime. If you ever miss any of the show, podcast links are always easily accessible and available at both ESPNSuFalls.com and on your mobile device with the free ESPN Sioux Falls app. Well, Matt Ryan, Hall of Famer, that's up to you after 15 seasons, four Pro Bowls and a MVP. Former Falcons and Indianapolis Colts quarterback Matt Ryan announced his retirement yesterday, officially ending the career of one of the most durable and consistent players of his generation. Ryan made the announcement in a video statement posted to social media by the Falcons, saying, so today, 16 years after being drafted, my childhood dream has officially come to an end. I'm honored to retire as a Falcon. He added, you have no control in this profession and where you start. I'm so lucky that my start and my finish was here in Atlanta. During a news conference on Monday, team owner Arthur Blank added, this is an exceptional football player, but probably more exceptional as a human being, as a husband, as a father, and as a great friend. 
He's then been a beloved friend to me during that period of time. He's one of our own, and he's certainly one of Atlanta's own. Ryan, 38 years old, started all 234 games he played during his career, including every game for the Falcons from 2010 all the way up till October 27th of 2019 when he missed a matchup against the Seahawks because of an ankle injury. Ryan led the NFL in completions twice. He led in attempts once, completion percentage once, and in his career completed 65.6% of his passes for 62,792 yards, 381 touchdowns against just 183 interceptions and a career quarterback rating of 93.6. And again, Hall of Fame or Hall of Very Good, that's up to everyone's debate here. We'll see what happens with Philip Rivers. We'll see what happens with Eli Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, and all these guys that have recently retired. Matt Ryan feels like he is a peer to those players. He's ahead of Eli and Pat. Passing yards. He's ahead of guys like Carson Palmer, Drew Bledsoe, Vinny Testaverde, Joe Flacco, Russell Wilson, all those modern era eh kind of guys that are among the top 20, top 15 all time in passing yards. And I will bring this up not to troll Falcons fans and not to bring up any bad memories. But what would the narrative be today about Matt Ryan if they just would have hung on and found a way to take down Tom Brady and the New England Patriots back in 2016? 28 to 3, very unfortunate, but Matt Ryan's career not so fairly defined by that game. Certainly a rock solid player outside of that game, outside of that year. Played well in the game for the most part. But just had it slip through their fingers, not just Ryan, but the whole team and the narrative around him and Philip Rivers and the guys that are ringless, pretty darn difficult to say, yes, surefire Hall of Famer, but simply we will wait and see. And Matt Ryan was a heck of a football player at his prime in the National Football League. Some quarterbacks are coming, some quarterbacks are going. Jets are trading quarterback Zach Wilson to the Broncos as of yesterday, and they didn't have to give up much from the Broncos' perspective. They did send a sixth-round pick, pick number 203, to the Jets in exchange for Wilson, and they went down 53 spots in the draft, essentially. They received pick 256 in return, and the Broncos don't have to pay Wilson his whole salary. Wilson was due to make $5.5 million this year, and the Jets say, okay, we'll pay half of that. You take him. Get him out of town. Best of luck with Zach Wilson. We'll see what the Broncos can do with Wilson. Very low cost. Kick of the tires on a potential backup, and I'm not going to say potential starter because right now, I'm not sure if Zach Wilson is good enough and confident enough to be a top-tier backup in the NFL. Not a knock on the young man, just based on my own opinion and what I've seen lately. I would love to see some sort of resurgence there. Sean Payton, self-proclaimed quarterback whisperer. We'll see what Zach Wilson can do out in Denver. Lastly here, Broncos did ink a veteran cornerback Levi Wallace to a one-year contract yesterday. And Denver adds to that defense looking to shore up one of their needs ahead of Thursday. NFL draft draft previews in a hurry here Joe DeLeon on the other side of an upcoming break the Giants hold pick number six in the NFL draft this year they have six overall picks in the draft as well one in the first second third fourth fifth and sixth round no seventh rounder this year for big blue big needs Debatable, but I think quarterback is a need for the New York Giants. Could it be Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, maybe Michael Penix, maybe Bo Nix? We'll wait and see. New York Giants are also rumored to perhaps trade up in the NFL draft, maybe to stay ahead in positioning of the Minnesota Vikings. Other positions of need, wide receiver, they could easily get Malik Neighbors or easily get Marvin Harrison Jr. this year at number six. Maybe number five is the spot to go to. They'll have access to a premier cornerback. They added one of those last year in the draft in Deontay Banks. Could it be Quinion Mitchell? Could it be Terry and Arnold? We'll wait and see. Also need guard or tackle help. Certainly available at pick six for the Giants. Pick number five for the Chargers. Five and 12 finish. New GM, new head coach, and a new organization moving forward. And they have nine draft picks this year good amount of capital here one in the first second third two fours a five a six and two sevens for the la chargers big needs for them wide receiver offensive line particularly a tackle 
cornerback, defensive tackle, and tight end. Brock Bowers has been linked. Is the value good enough at pick five to take a tight end? That remains to be seen. I've got this circled and underlined. Sorry about it, Charger Josh. I think the Chargers need to trade down from pick number five. That's what I've got for you today. Giants and Chargers coming up tomorrow. We're into the top three. The Patriots and the Commanders are final previews of draft season. We already previewed the Cardinals who hold pick four. And of course, we already previewed the Bears who hold pick number nine. Final previews of the season coming up tomorrow. Patriots and Commanders. We take the break back with NFL Draft Talk. Joe DeLeon of the Believe Podcast Network joins us next on Overtime. Overtime day. Unwrap your sandwich and get caught up with Burt Ramin on ESPN 102.3 and AM 1000 KSOO. Sioux Falls Sports Leader. Down the home stretch we come on this Tuesday edition of Overtime. It's time to talk NFL Draft. Just got done previewing the Giants and the Chargers. Pick six and pick number five. Both of those picks, by the way, very much in flux. Could be for sale, up, down, or otherwise. Here to break down the NFL Draft. Talk some uh, draft specialists, quarterbacks, top five, everything you need to know in the NFL Draft. One of our favorites, Joe DeLeon, college football NFL Draft Analyst for the Believe Network, also, the host of a top-tier program, the Rafino and Joe Show, joins us now on the ESPN Hotline. Joe, my friend, draft week. We made it. How you feeling? Good, good. And we made it the perfect way to phrase it because it feels like it's been an eternity since <laughs> the start of this, this draft process. And uh, I'm just excited that we're finally here and that we can see where these guys are going to land. All right, Joe. Well, I'm going to put you to task here early because last night I was texting a buddy I went to college with and we were catching up on all sorts of things. And then it shifted to sports and he said, OK, Mr. Radio Personality out in South Dakota, how does the top five shake out in order with the teams? And here's what I said. I said, Caleb at one. I said, Jaden Daniels might not be happy about it, but I think he goes two to Washington. Three, I told them that the Minnesota Vikings would trade up and take J.J. McCarthy Four, I had the Giants trading up for May. And five, Chargers unable to find a partner. I think they land Harrison Jr. at pick five. How off base am I with that prediction? I think that's pretty close because right now there is just relative uncertainty after we get past pick one, which feels a little off from what typically happens. I feel like we kind of do have a bit of a sense on how things could shake up. But the uncertainty is is driven by what you brought up with Jane Daniels that at number two, it was a foregone conclusion until Friday when we found out the aftermath of uh, the visit that he had. There was a group visit with multiple quarterbacks. And what Schefter reported on, I had heard something very similar. It sounds like the relationship is already off to a rocky start. I think to their benefit this year's class, there's not a huge drop-off between who could go second. It is a matter of stylistic fit and need for what teams are looking for at quarterback. And I think that the commanders, if they don't think that Jane Daniels is going to be happy playing there, they could take Drake May. I would not take that out of the equation. I don't feel like that they're going to trade out. I think if any team does trade out of picking a quarterback, it would be the Patriots because they're in a bit more of a patient reset mode after what happened with Mac Jones and how quickly that fell apart because they didn't have the roster around him. And then as you talked about, I think the Chargers ending up with Marvin Harrison Jr. makes a lot of sense, especially because of how badly they need a receiver. And if they don't take him, I could totally see Malik Neighbors as well. Yeah, Malik Neighbors could be a fit. And some people out there, there's all sorts of opinions. Some people out there do have Malik Neighbors as the wide receiver one of this class. I'm a big fan of Roma Dunze as well. Really dynamic top of the draft as far as wide receivers go. Joe, how much uh, this time of year do you read the tea leaves into some of that? I don't want to call it conspiracy because there's some smoke and some fire here, but Josh McCown is with the Vikings. He coached Drake May in high school. Cliff Kingsbury is with the Commanders. He's got a history with Caleb Williams. How much do you read into those things as potential landing spots loom for these quarterbacks? I think that's very important to pay attention to because established relationships and Eliminating uncertainty, I think, is really important throughout this process. So the Vikings, they might be debating on what they think is going to happen and who they think is the right fit for them. And if they feel a little bit more certain of 
who Drake May is as a person, who Drake May is uh, as a competitor, as a leader. Maybe that works against him because of McCown having been so close to him. Maybe he doesn't like his personality, but I seriously doubt that that's going to be the case. Uh, I think that it's very important. The only barrier that stands in their way is if they'd be able to make that move to trade up that high to make that pick. Right now they still sit at 11. And I'm really curious if come draft time, if they're able to actually make the push necessary to get in that spot to take May or even J.J. McCarthy. And obviously a lot of surprises in store for the NFL draft Thursday through Saturday from Detroit. I know that you've got a history covering FCS. We're in FCS country with USD down the road, South Dakota State up the road, and a lot of schools around this area. How much growth have you seen relative to the top schools and the schools across the map uh, in every direction as far as the number of FCS prospects and the number of FCS prospects that get in to the top three rounds of the NFL draft each and every year? Yeah, I, I don't think that this year we're going to have a ton of premier FCS guys go early. I mean, it's very, it's very much, it's typically a rarity when we have a few guys go within the first three rounds. However, I think there's a lot of guys that are on the table to go somewhere on day three. Christian Boyd from Northern Iowa has been a riser despite not going to the NFL Combine. Uh, Christian McCormick or uh, Mason McCormick, rather, yep. and uh, Garrett Greenfield, who are from South Dakota State, two offensive linemen, had really good combine performances, enough to solidify them getting drafted. Isaiah Davis is a little bit of a wild card, but I, I think that some teams are going to really love the physicality that he plays with. And then the one that I have always really pounded the table for and been excited about is Jalex Hunt, the edge rusher from Houston Christian, who, yep. to me, is one of my biggest sleepers in this class. I think he is very boomer bust, but if he hits, he could be one of the uh, more productive, useful rotational pass rushers in the NFL. But those are really the premier guys. I, I think a realistic number for FCS is somewhere in that 5 to 10 range, which typically is on, on target for what we see for the amount of guys that are picked. And it's definitely growing a little bit incrementally year over year. Great representation for Sioux Falls native Cooper DeGene, of course. Sioux Falls ties for Tip Ryman, the tight end uh, from Illinois. You can view that article at ESPNSiouxFalls.com. When it comes to the quarterbacks, let's shift back there for just a second. The top four, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy. What quarterback out of those four concerns you the most and why? It's J.J. McCarthy, and uh, as much as, as much as he could pan out to be a really good starting quarterback in the NFL, and as much as if the projected landing spot of him ending up with the Vikings is one of the best situations, if not the best situation for a young quarterback to land, he's still a very risky player because there is a tiny sample size compared to these other guys on what he's capable of doing. And it, I'm not saying that he hasn't played enough. He's been a starter for two seasons. I'm more so pointing out to the fact that they ran the ball as much as they did. They had the luxury of doing so. He wasn't called upon to make a lot of really difficult or tough throws, nor was he ever called on to be a guy that was asked to put the team on his back and win a football game in a crunch time situation. There are, there's no evidence like I have with Caleb Williams or with Gene Daniels or Drake May or for Bo Nix or Michael Penix for that matter. Those guys have games where Things weren't working out. The rest of the team was struggling, and they needed to go down and put points on the board. I don't have that with J.J. McCarthy. So this lack of tangible evidence of what he could be outside of just a handoff merchant, uh, there's risk presented with that. I think he could pan out. He could be steady. He seems like a hardworking kid, a smart kid. But we need to acknowledge that there is risk with a player like that who doesn't have enough on film to dictate that he can be a high upside, high impact playmaker. Joe DeLeon, NFL Draft, college football analyst and host of the Rafino and Joe Show is our guest here on Overtime. Don't miss, by the way, first round uh, live reaction show, part of the Hack City uh, Network there on YouTube. Joe DeLeon, Ryan Roberts playing host to that, 7 o'clock on YouTube there. A lot to look forward to. I love the reaction shows. Now react to this a little bit. You're my go-to guy for specialists. I'm not going to ask you about long snappers. I want to ask you about Tory Taylor from Iowa. Where does he go? What's realistic? And then who's the top kicker that people should keep an eye out for this year in the draft? Yeah, I think that Tory Taylor certainly has uh, a potential to be the first 
uh, punters selected and maybe even the first specialist selected because we know how consistently productive he was. He fits the prototype that you look for um, in terms of ball placement, distance that he was able to drive the football. I think he's just so well-rounded and he's got so many snaps under his belt. I think Will Reichard for me feels like the most likely uh, kicker to go first because how productive he was in college. I've noticed that the NFL has this tendency to overvalue college production over what translates to the NFL. And I think Roberto Aguayo is a perfect example of that. So if Reichert ends up being the first one selected, it certainly wouldn't surprise me. And obviously there's a ton of movers and shakers for the NFL draft Thursday through Saturday. ESPN, ESPN Radio with some coverage there. Our coverage Thursday begins at 6 o'clock Friday at 5 o'clock. Joe, before we let you go, I asked another draft analyst yesterday the same question. Over and undervalued prospects. Give me a guy that many people have in the top 15, top 10, maybe first round that you don't. And on the opposite of that, give me a guy that's not uh, Jalex Hunt that is outside of round number one that you have in round number one come Thursday night? Yeah, overvalued. I've been constantly bringing up Chop Robinson from Penn State. I think that he's very twitchy. He's very athletic, and he is going to be pigeonholed as a situational pass rusher. And I think some people keep depicting him as uh, this very rare edge rusher prospect, but the reality of it is he's not big enough, strong enough, or consistent enough to defend, to defend the run. So I'm not picking a guy like that in the first round. Sure, it could be a good pro, but to consider him to be a first-rounder is way too rich for my blood. One guy on the other side of this, though, that I think is not getting enough love is Jalen Polk, the third wide receiver at Washington. He, to me, is a tremendous route runner. He is impactful after the catch, very fluid uh, in and out of his cuts. I think that he could be that day two receiver out of all these guys that isn't getting a lot of love and could end up being the most productive. I've seen some people compare his potential production to Puka Nakua and his usage to Puka Nakua, and I don't know if that's a total one-to-one cop for me, but I really do think that in his first couple of years in the league, he could be super, super productive depending on the team that he goes to. Jalen Polk, one of three Washington wide receivers that could go in the first two rounds coming up this weekend in the NFL Draft. Always appreciate the inside, my friend. That's Joe DeLeon, NFL Draft College football analyst with the Believe Network, also the host of the Rafino and Joe Show. Wish you the best this weekend. I wish that you could uh, kind of just sit on the couch and do nothing, but you got that live stream, man. That's going to be a ton of fun. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Of course. Thanks for having me. All right, Joe DeLeon. And again, don't miss out on that coverage. There's all sorts of great live streams out there. 2024 NFL Draft First Round Live Reaction Show. All you got to do is type in Hack City, H-A-C-K City, for NFL Draft College Football Analysis. Top prospects coming up Thursday night. The NFL Draft coverage at 6 o'clock right here on ESPN Sioux Falls. Now we'll take the break, tee it up when we come back to round out the show with the good, the bad, and the ugly. A lot, of get, uh, a lot to get to, a lot of bad actors out there. We'll give you the latest that you need to know to send you back in on your Tuesday. Tomorrow on the show, Darren Wolfson hops in. Later this week, Dustin Baker in for Thursday and Friday. We got your bases covered no matter what. No matter what. Like they say in Draft Day, the movie with Kevin Costner. No matter what, Vontae Mack on the sticky note of sorts. We'll be back no matter what with the good, the bad, and the ugly next on Overtime. You want more of Overtime? It's all on the podcast. Free with the app or online at ESPN Sioux Falls. Overtime with Burt Ramin on ESPN 102.3 and AM 1000 KSOO. Right back with you. It's the Tuesday edition of Overtime. Reminder, tomorrow on the show, opportunity to win big with the identity crisis. Always brought to you by the very best breakfast in Sioux Falls. That's the original Pancake House. And for that hack, as always, I say this to you guys occasionally. I don't really want some competition for this. But when my family and I are gearing up to go to OPH, 
on the weekend. It's going to be busy. We like to get there early. But just in case, they have you covered. Just dial in to your phone, OriginalPancakeHouseSiouxFalls.com. You can join the wait list on the way. You can get a feel for the crowd that's there, get a feel for the crowd that's coming, and put in your wait list, put in your party size, put in some specifications, special needs, high chair, aisle, booth, whatever you want there. It's available. The Original Pancake House, Sioux Falls. Dot com wait list on the way trailblazing is what I like to say for that particular asset the original pancakehouse.com join the wait list on the way time now for the good the bad the ugly let's do it as we say so long to this Tuesday edition of overtime been the problem child today displayed their ugly side whined a bit too much and is now setting a bad example Bert is calling out today's headline makers with the good the bad and the ugly there's a lot of good and a lot of bad and a good mix of ugly coming out of boulder these days colorado though yesterday is in the good category today though Right back to the bad. Colorado continued to bolster its roster from the transfer portal with former Ohio State running back Dallin Hayden. A source confirmed to ESPN yesterday, Hayden entered the portal earlier this month after going through spring practice at Ohio State where he had 663 rushing yards and six scores over the last two seasons. The 5'10", 205-pounder saw the field extensively as a freshman at OSU following a string of injuries to others and recorded 553 yards and five scores. But last year, not so much, and now he opts to transfer to Colorado University. The issue with this is I don't think it sat too well with one of the incumbent running backs there at Colorado. Colorado running back Dylan Edwards. If you haven't watched a Buffalo game lately, then you probably don't know who he is, but if you have, you surely do. Dylan Edwards, very dynamic playmaker as of an hour ago. According to Pete Nakos on Twitter and on 3 Sports, Dylan Edwards into the transfer portal. On to the bat, a Tallahassee judge has ordered Florida State and the ACC Conference to enter mediation in hopes of settling a high-profile lawsuit that could dramatically impact the future of the league. Judge John C. Cooper technically approved the ACC's motion to dismiss on Monday but gave Florida State seven days to amend its complaint because the university needs more specificity regarding key facts in the case that he says is worth up to half a billion, with a B, dollars. The conference would have 20 days to respond afterwards and another hearing would be set. The case is not over, Cooper said. The case will continue. Cooper ordered the size to begin mediation within 120 days, but a mediator cannot force an agreement, so the case could very well end up back in court again. Florida State, Clemson, rumored possibly maybe to be thinking about leaving the ACC. Arguments there over exit fees, arguments there over TV deals. It's an argument in the ACC right now. And if one of those two schools leave, or if both of those two schools leave, they've been banner carriers in many, many sports for many, many years for that conference. It could reshape the ACC and further reshape the college football Climate. On to the bad, the Buffalo Sabres have rehired Lindy Ruff, the last head coach to lead the franchise to the NHL playoffs back in 2011. 64-year-old was fired by the Devils after 61 games this season, and he replaces Don Granato, whom the Sabres fired after just three seasons. Ruff back in town, not bad, but the overall state of the Sabres certainly is. Ruff coached the Sabres for 15 seasons from 97 to 2013, got let go after 2013, replaced by Ron Rolston, Sabres have gone through six different coaches since Ruff was fired, and they're going back to Lindy Ruff, age 64, for next season and beyond. Lastly here, quickly as we round it out, the Milwaukee Brewers and pitcher Wade Miley dealing with some injuries, and he was placed on the 15-day IL yesterday with left elbow inflammation. The 37-year-old lefty allowed four runs on four hits in three innings in his last time out, a 6-3 loss to the Padres on Tuesday of last week, 0-1 with a 5-1-4 ERA in two starts and now on the 15-day IL. We say so long with that. We'll talk to you tomorrow, same time, 11-1 to here on Overtime. We do have an early show this week to make way for the Minnesota Twins. That's coming up on Thursday. We'll be on at 10 o'clock, but tomorrow, 
Same time, same place, 11 to 1, right here on ESPN Sioux Falls. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you then. Wednesday edition of Overtime tomorrow, right here on ESPN 102.3 AM 1000 KSOO.